Hi YouTube, Chrissy here at A Little Glam, A Lot of Mom. In today's video, I'm sharing an autumn-inspired handicraft that doubles as an activity to practice hand stitching or beginner embroidery. Bella is making a leaf crown out of felt today while practicing three hand stitching techniques she's been focusing on the last several weeks. Now, the ages I recommend for this project is eight and up, although you'll also see a little bit of needle felting techniques today for embellishments, and that can be done with younger age, uh, maybe six to seven years old. Let's start with the materials you'll need for this project. You'll need felt sheets. We only use 100% merino wool and have been for years because it's worth the cost. The buttery feel and touch, and it also ages 100% lovelier than synthetic. If you want to add the needle felted embellishments as we are, then you'll need a pad like this and felting needles. We also have the handy needle holder tools. You'll need ribbon to attach to the crown and of course embroidery floss or thread. We have a bundle here of a jewel toned autumn palette. You'll also need sewing needles and not necessary but I highly recommend a threading tool for your littles. It cuts back a lot of frustration when threading the floss in the needle head and you'll see that in a few clips ahead. You'll want finger guards for needle felting. Sewing pins are also a helpful tool to hold patterns in place. I recommend sewing scissors and wool roving, again, only necessary if you'll be needle felting. Unless you want to attempt freehanding the leaf cutouts, you'll need templates, also known as patterns, to cut out your felt leaves. You can print leaf images online, hand draw them, or purchase an actual pattern. I also highly recommend a reference book for hand embroidery, not just to learn different st stitching techniques, but as beginners, we found that we need to go back to a reference every once in a while. Also, I want to note that I am not introducing these stitching techniques to Bella today. She has already become familiar with these techniques in another activity we did together. We used embroidery hoops and a tutorial on YouTube. I'll link that video down below for you. I recommend this step as the formal lesson before moving on to a project like today's. Before I move on to the stitching, I want to share that our pattern or template is from the Seeking Balance Autumn Equinox Festival Guide by Hearth Magic. And if you have a little boy, he might enjoy wearing a mask more than a crown, like my little boy. And Amber also has a leaf mask template for that. So the first step is to cut out your crown and leaf patterns out of the felt. I recommend pinning your paper pattern onto felt with sewing pins and using sewing scissors. These two steps and tools make a big difference. Once you've got your felt leaves all cut out, you can add embellishments at this point. We worked on needle felting embellishments a few years back and still have some of those leaves left over, but today we are going to work on some more. My kids have been needle felting for several years now. Luna started as young as four years old, but I can't emphasize enough that this practice is subject to each child. It requires a child with focus, patience, and some maturity to handle a felting needle as they're very very large and sharp. You know your child best, so please use your discretion, and I always recommend finger guards for children. Once your leaves are embellished or not, you want to start a layout of your placement on the crown. I recommend starting with the center, which is the focal point of the crown. As you can see, Bella has already stitched that down, and then working outwards from there. With sewing pins, I pin no more than two leaves at a time just to make it easier for Bella to handle and not so overwhelming, but constantly coming back to play around with the placement and making adjustments as we see necessary. And before we move on to stitching, Bella wants to share a tip with you, and that is running your floss through a block of beeswax. This will coat and stiffen your floss, making it more manageable and less likely to knot and break. Mm -hmm. 
you can also see her threading tool in use here i'm telling you it's super helpful this tool is worth the cost it was just about five dollars for a pack of i believe four or five on amazon So it's hard to capture a good clip of Bella stitching but I tried my best here for you and today Bella is focused on three stitches uh, a running stitch which is the most basic of stitches but used to build upon many other stitching techniques so it's a good base to know well she also practiced an over stitch and a split stitch A little bit of encouragement here when working on handcrafts with small children don't set your expectations to finish the project in one sitting although we were able to finish this in one day some projects we break up over multiple days but even today it wasn't done in one sitting we'd work on it for about 30 minutes put it down you know move on with life and school and play and then come back to it throughout the day baskets are super helpful for projects because you can gently just toss all of your supplies in a basket it's a contained mess is what we call it and we can just come back to that basket and pull out our ongoing projects as necessary remember to slow down and instead of focusing on the outcome focus on the process while we were working on this project i put on some classical uh, christmas music instrumentals and bella said to me mom this is so peaceful and there's just so much beauty in handiwork and although handicraft projects are so beautiful and meaningful that's the difference between a handicraft and a craft it's not something that we're just gonna throw out in the trash uh, the project has a meaning behind it I find that more than the tangible project itself the treasure of handicrafts is in the process So once Bella hand stitched all of her leaves uh, and we wrapped the crown around her head we noticed that there is going to be some gaps in between the leaves and Bella chose to fill those with more needle felting. Finally, attaching the ribbon. So once you've measured the ribbon around your child's head and make sure to leave some room for actually tying the ribbon, we used sewing pins to hold it in place and then used a back stitch to secure it well. Now, back stitching is a stitch that Bella is familiar with. However, because this was such a small space, I assisted in the stitching. And here is Bella's finished project. It turned out so, so lovely. Bella's hand stitching skills are developing so wonderfully. And this was just a fun project to add more practice to it. Waldorf crowns can be used in pretend dress up play. We also love using them in our birthday traditions as birthday crowns. Please tag me or message me if you end up creating this project. Don't forget to check out the description box for links to the materials and check out Hearth Magic on Etsy for the pattern. Thanks for being here and thanks for your love.